It wasn't all that long ago where people were speculating that Warner Brothers had somebody working on a Superman game behind the scenes. This was of course before we found out about Gotham Knights and the Suicide Squad game, which more or less put those speculations to bed, at least for now. But there is a reason that those speculations arose, and it's not just because people are getting tired of Batman. People just really want a Superman game. There's genuinely an audience for it. Before we go ahead, a quick request. We upload new videos every single day, and your subscription matters a lot. So, please consider subscribing and enabling all notifications by clicking the bell icon. With that out of the way, let's begin. While there are mountains of reasons for developers to pass up that minefield of potential mistakes, and with the Nintendo 64's attempt at one being one of gaming's greatest blunders, there's no denying that the appetite for a well-made Superman game definitely exists. And there's good reason for that, too. The character of Superman and the power fantasy that he embodies does seem to lend itself well to the gaming medium, at least conceptually, despite crossing into it so rarely. Well, it seems that, at least for now, Vantan Game Academy in Osaka, Japan has an answer for this problem that sheds more light on the potential for a great Superman game than perhaps anything else ever has. The game is called Undefeated, and you can download it on Steam right now for free, as long as you have a relatively recent computer, 3 gigs of storage space, and a 64-bit version of Windows, you should be able to run it, as it's remarkably well optimized and runs extremely well on my own fairly average rig. The art style might remind you of the old Warner Brothers Batman and Superman cartoons, but brought to life in 3D. It works extremely well for what this game is trying to do, and probably also has the side benefit of helping out with the optimization. The art style throughout the game is consistent, and everything has the bright, somewhat simpler, borderline cartoony look. This probably isn't just a technical choice, but a deliberate artistic one as well. NPCs, buildings, and on-screen notifications all fit really well with the aesthetic here, and you really can't go wrong with this look for a light-hearted action game. One thing that you will notice immediately upon firing up the game is that it is obviously Superman-inspired, but it also has a little dash of Japanese flair, like something you might find in Dragon Ball Z with the way that flying and attacking animations are so fast and visually dazzling to trigger. Running and flying are immediately familiar and easy to learn with a simple up-down, forward-back, left-right movement scheme that couldn't be simpler to get your mind around. Introducing boosts in heavy ground pounds definitely add another layer of awesomeness to it, as the pavement below the main character cracks on impact, and any enemies or machines in range are immediately destroyed. The game uses these abilities to great effect, and its small handful of different mission types. One minute you'll be flying to somebody who's trapped under a large slab of concrete and throwing it off of them. The next, you'll be flying to a fire and putting it out all before taking out enemy industrial equipment as fast as you can to get the highest possible score. The objectives are marked by large lights shining into the air, so no matter where you are in terms of latitude or longitude, you're likely to be able to see where your next objective is, and you can immediately zoom over there and take care of it if you wish. It's a great way to construct a game like this, and even though it isn't really something that you would go out of your way to buy for a full price, it's an idea that is so beautiful in its simplicity, and I can't help to hope that major game publishers are taking note and perhaps recalibrating their thoughts on the potential success of a Superman game. But of course, the fun doesn't stop with just flying around to different objectives and beating up bad guys or things. There's also a few different challenges for you to undertake if you wish to do so to test your skills with the controls. Most notable to me is a ring race. Yes, actually like the kinds in Superman 64, except good and fun. Up until this point, you could argue that this isn't directly poking fun at Superman 64, but after playing through one of those, any shred of that facade has completely evaporated. Undefeated is absolutely giving Superman 64 a little nod of well-deserved arrogance with this one. On top of that, some of the enemy designs and behaviors are clearly well-made. And not just some reused assets from another game. It's all original stuff here as far as I can tell, and it's put together really well.
while the tone of the designs are certainly reminiscent of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what pretty much everyone thinks of when they think of high-end comic book adaptations at this point in our culture, Undefeated does have a shred of its own little twist to it that makes me wish it was a full game. Playing through the various missions and challenges doesn't get old nearly as fast as you would think it would with something this simple, and it really just speaks to the value of good execution and not overthinking things, as opposed to throwing millions and millions of dollars at projects, trying to cover up their mediocrity with big-name voice actors and other bells and whistles. And if you do get tired of the structure of the game, you can just as easily spend 5 or 10 minutes just flying around the city and goofing around. Doing this is shockingly close to the amount of fun you feel when swinging around the streets of New York as Insomniac Spider-Man. And again, if nothing else, it serves as an excellent reminder of the value of fun being prioritized over anything else in game design. One of the many great miracles of this game, other than the fact that it's absolutely free to download and play, is that it's student-made. The Vantan Academy is one of Japan's most prestigious schools with a game design focus, but still a school nonetheless. This is not Rocksteady or Netherrealm, yet I can't help but think that perhaps those studios could take notice of the work being done over there. And that's the ultimate takeaway from Undefeated. It's not something that I would recommend you going out and buying if it actually costed you any money, but if there was a little bit more meat on the bone, I probably would. But more importantly, it shows that a fully licensed AAA-style Superman game could be done if it were approached in the right way. It doesn't have to be some mysterious third rail of gaming to be avoided at all costs for the rest of eternity. Not everything has to be highly technical and cost $200 million to be made and to be fun. In fact, if a Superman game were to be approached with this style and in this way, it would probably stand to be more successful in every regard anyway than it would be if it were to be approached with an expensive, typical modern-day AAA attitude. On top of that, I don't think this is a lesson just for Warner Brothers. This is really a lesson for everybody making games right now, that a game's fun factor can carry you so much further than your budget alone, no matter what you're making. Until that message is received by the big publishers, it's good to know that we do have little cheap and or free games like this to enjoy for little chunks of time. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.